Well, what's up, guys? Uh, we're back here on the Challenger. Uh, I think on this episode, probably going to get rid of all this stuff. We're going to clean up this engine bay, um, get rid of all this gunk in there. That gearbox is nasty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sand her up a little bit in here and shoot some paint on here. Make it look a little nicer in here. Um, I think we're also probably going to pressure wash that thing. Oh, God, it is still filthy. And I think we're going to clean this one up, too, and probably start tearing into it. Uh, putting that shift kit in I bought for it. Probably won't record much on it because, to be honest with you guys, never really been into these transmissions and don't really know too much about them. So I'm basically just going to follow directions on the shift kit and uh, hopefully it works, I guess, you know. But uh, yeah, let's get after it. Got a majority of the, the wiring harness and the AC stuff all out of here. Um, getting pretty late, so I'm going to call her, call her night. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to get that booster out, and that's not going to be very much fun. Uh, I'm going to get this gearbox out of here, too. Um, but, yeah, after I get all that stuff out of here, it should be pretty easy to clean up in here. Um, this is, like, the worst of the rust on this car, honestly. And my theory on it, you know, back in the day, you had those uh, the liquid-filled batteries or... Um, acid-filled batteries and stuff. They weren't sealed like today's batteries, I'm guessing. You know, batteries probably leaking the acid all over here and then leaked down there to that radiator support and just tore into that metal. But, you know, it's weight reduction, right? Go faster. Um, yeah, I got all the uh, AC stuff and the blower fan over here. And I got my wiring harness laid out, kind of, sort of, how it would have been in the car. So there's your uh, passenger side lights, um, driver side lights. And come up to here, you got your um, uh, starter wire. Goes, goes up to your positive uh, terminal on the battery. Um, you got your big fittings that go on the bulkhead connectors or whatever on the firewall. Um, then you got your, uh, ignition box hookup deal, um, ballast resistor in there, your, uh, alternator wires and stuff, um, windshield washer pump. And I think I'm going to take all this wire and harness apart, get rid of some wiring like this. This was on the factory intake connected to that two barrel. I'm guessing um, some sort of a temperature sensor or something for the choke. I'm guessing, I don't know. But I'm probably just gonna get rid of it. Um, just to clean up the wiring harness a little bit. Probably not gonna run these factory uh, clips because they're pretty brittle and half of them broke when I was taking them out. It's probably gonna get some split loom and. Make it look real nice in there, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get after it tomorrow. Time for some sleep. Well, got the uh, got the condenser out of here. Um, got the gearbox out of here after fighting it forever. I ended up having to uh, take that steering column and uh, loosen it inside and pull it to get the coupler off. Um, also had to fight that stupid brake booster. That's the most stupid design brake booster ever. I don't know what Dodge was thinking back in the day. I also got my fender tag up here. She's pretty rough, but I think if I'm careful enough, I can probably clean it up and try and decode it and see what it, what it means and stuff. Um, also went ahead and I'm gonna, this was a, uh, see the rip there I put some super glue under there I'm gonna try and keep this sticker and just put a piece of masking tape over it so that way when uh, I can just paint over it and then take the masking tape off and keep those factory stickers because that's that stuff's pretty cool um, now 
Oh yeah, I also got the, put some cardboard over there so that way I'm pressure washing, a bunch of water doesn't get inside. Um, this is also gonna be very fun to push out because now I have no gearbox to turn the wheels. So this is gonna suck. But uh, we're gonna get some lunch and come back at it. Got her all washed down. Cleaned up pretty nice. There's still this stuck on stuff, but once I get to sanding, it should just come right off. Should be no big deal. Um, while we're waiting for this to dry, and drug out this old dirty Bruce Jenner. I clean it up so we can start tearing into it. Ooh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I didn't have any uh, degreaser spray, but I got most of the buildup washed off of it. I think uh, when we get on the bench, I'm going to take a, a grinder with a wire wheel on it and uh, clean it up. This is just, I took a little wire brush here and cleaned up pretty nice. So if I just take a uh, wire wheel on the grinder, just clean it up real quick, should be all right. Um, I'm probably just going to end up painting this thing black. So then, you know, if it uh, leaks again, just makes build up, uh, you won't be able to tell because the transmission will be black and so will the build up. Mint. Now, if you're cheap like me, and you buy these Harbor Freight wire cups for your grinder, wear your safety glasses because uh, these things like to throw their wires at you and you'll be looking like a porcupine. And they don't feel very good when they pierce your skin. Trust me on this one. Wear your safety glasses. You know, got everything all masked off and I think we're ready to paint. And yes, I am going to paint directly over this rust. It'll be alright. Didn't turn out too bad for a rattle can paint job. Not too shabby. Well, sun's going down. It's getting cold out. You get this damn thing pushed back in there. Ah, uh, it's gonna be fun. What's up, YouTube? Back here on the Budget Build Challenger. Uh, as you've seen in the last video, got a bunch of parts ordered for the front end, and that's what we're gonna be tackling on this episode. Uh, let me get this thing jacked up, put her in the air, and start stripping her away. Let's get it. We all got the uh, spindle off. Oh, wait, the spindle's right here. Duh. Uh, got the spindle off. Uh, there's your rotor. And of course, when you're ordering things, you always forget something. I need rotors real bad. These things are I've seen better days. Um, but I think a next step here with these torsion bar. Uh, you see the torsion bar in there? Kinda, the bar there. Um, gotta get the torsion bar, get the pressure off of it. And to do that, I'm just gonna take my jack here. I've already got my jack stand sitting there, so it'll hold the car. And then just put the jack right here and lift it up. And it'll take that pressure off of that uh, torsion bar. Then you lower your key down here, and then you can go ahead and get your shock off and whatnot. But you can see there's a bunch of pressure. Hit this bolt, and it ain't going nowhere. That should, thing should just be able to fly out, but it's got that pressure from that torsion bar. Oh, I also see, uh, I need some bolts for my sway bar here. Getting this lower control arm was a little bit tricky, let me tell you. Um, never really messed with torsion bar setups before, so uh, kind of had to figure it out. But once I got it taken apart, it's not too hard. So you gotta start off with uh, back here where the torsion bar goes in. Um, it had this little clip in there to hold it from backing out. And also um, this would set up into here, obviously. And uh, you had this nut that hold the control arm on. So once you get those out, you can just push this back and then you just take this. I had, there was a little plastic shield, this little thing right there. That's sitting there, I just unbolted it. 
and this just comes out whoop, like that. Not too difficult. Oh, one thing I do want to mention though is uh, this ball joint. You see how it's got these flat edges on all four sides? These are a threaded style ball joint. They're not a press in. Um, I bought this kit. Um, it's got a couple of different size these uh, ball joint sockets because I've tried putting a crest wrench on there and that just did not work but they should do they should work great um, definitely recommend getting you a set or just going to the parts store and renting them out I think this is like 35 bucks or something so yep we've basically got the whole front suspension tore down I'm leaving this uh, I guess you'd call it a strut no, what would you call that? I don't know, it keeps it from going uh, back and forth. Um, it controls your your caster. Um, I'm leaving this in here because these have a rubber bushing up front. I'll show you. And that rubber bushing, get, it just gives a little bit of play. And your tire can be in there if you're going around the corners real hard. Be in there just moving back and forth a little bit. So I'm gonna save the money and buy the QA1, um, whatever the hell arm they're called. And uh, basically gets rid of that rubber bushing up in there. And just has like a uh, universal joint looking, you know, doodad. Um, also got the drag links out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and get them cleaned up. Throw some paint on them. I got new tie rods, this idle arm was Pretty awesome. Oh. But whatever, you get it. It's bad. Um. Oh yeah, I can probably, now that I'm here, go ahead and get my sweet new Borgeson steering box in there. Excited for this thing. So one of them uh, 14 to one quick steer ratio boxes. So it should make this thing handle pretty good. And my upper and lower control arms, I have to clean them all up and take them to work with me <clears throat> on my lunch break. Go ahead and get the bushings pushed out, <clears throat> new ones pushed back in. I've heard those are not a lot of fun, so wish me luck. Got these control arms uh, here at work using the press. I um, already did one. Uh, upper control arm bushings um, What you can do is if you're really stuck in there. You just use a press Just uh, get you a socket right there And you take a bigger socket that is sorry. It's kind of hard to do one-handed sockets bigger than the uh, the bushing there so that way it drives against that and Pushes it up from the top side or if they ain't in there too bad just take them over here to the vise and make sure you have it supported. Um, actually, it'd be upside down. <clears throat> Put it in this way and you just hammer them out with the big hammer. Um, but make sure it's got support under there um, because these stamped steel arms do like to bend. So just be careful, take your time. They're not too hard. You got this drag link all cleaned up. All the uh, tie rods and idle arm, pitman arm on. I'm gonna throw a throw some black paint on her and fly throw it back in the car and get to work on getting that steering gearbox in. Skipped ahead a little bit and uh, went ahead and got this Borgeson box in here with the uh, drag length. Greased them all up already. Um, also had to, to get this U-joint on here. Um, it wasn't too big of a deal, really. Um, you just have to cut off a little bit of your steering shaft, and it tells you in the directions on how to do that and stuff. And I'd rather have something like this, the U-joint style, than that, uh, I think it's called like a rag joint to use from the factory. U-joints are always better. Um, I think... Uh, I'm gonna call it quits for the night. It's getting late. I gotta do some work in the morning, so.
it's the next day and uh, after sleeping on this and thinking about this project uh getting this gearbox in here kind of motivated me to get the rest of this stuff back in so today i'm gonna get the blower motor back in uh the booster um probably the windshield wiper motor hook everything back up just so that way when i get the motor uh back together i can just throw it in here and won't have to worry about any of that stuff in there I'll show you. I just took the wire wheel to this booster. I'm gonna repaint it black, but you can see just the wire wheel makes a big difference. Just do a couple passes on it, and she'll be looking good. So, well, that looks much better. I went ahead and decided not to paint the blower motor or the windshield wiper uh, motor black because I thought the uh, that aluminum really popped there. I, thought, I think it looks pretty good. This is how the uh, brake booster came out. Not too bad. Put a little maxi tape over this factory sticker. I thought it looked pretty cool. Don't worry about that. Surface rust should be all right. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it quits on this video. Uh, probably gonna get in the wiring harness next. Start taking it apart and I got some of this uh, Sweet loom from Summit. It's convoluted split loom. Should look pretty good compared to the uh, masking tape, or not masking tape, electrical tape that they use from the factory. But uh, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the uh, bell notification button, and uh, have a good day.